Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I want to show you two disgusting cameras that I have. And these cameras are disgusting because they have suffered years of wear and tear. But they are still some of the best cameras for making videos out there, even today. So on the left side, I have the Panasonic GH4, which is about nine years old. And this is the Panasonic GH5, which I have been using for about seven years. Now you can think of this video as a review for these two cameras, including the GH5 Mark II and the GH6, which I do not have, because I actually know a lot about Panasonic Micro Four Thirds cameras since I've been using them for more than a decade. Let's talk about build quality first. I don't think Panasonic cameras have good build quality due to the material they use for the exterior, more specifically the silicone or the rubber exterior for the grip and for other parts. So you can see on this camera, which is already nine years old, the rubber has almost disintegrated and I'm still using this because it still works. It's just that you can see rubber, the black rubber flakes falling off sometimes and getting into my fingernails. And sometimes this is quite sticky. And this is the same problem with the Panasonic GH5 as well, because the GH5 uses the same rubber exterior. The hard shelf is fine. I've actually dropped this camera several times, but it still works. It's just that the plastic, and the uh, rubber, um, those are just not durable enough. So the covers for this port, uh, uh, the covers are gone. And the cover for this mic port is also gone. And you can see I have actually dropped the camera like this on the ground and the mic actually went inside. But this is still usable. And on this side, the cover for the SD card is also gone. And on the back, there is supposed to be rubber here, but you can see um, after years of use, the uh, rubber is just gone. The touch screen um, still works. I mean, the display works, but the touch actually does not work. And I have the same problem with my GH5 as well. The letters on the buttons, uh, they are just worn out. In terms of functionality, um, this still works. It's just that the exterior, as you can see, it's really worn out. And this is the Panasonic GH5. So you can see the rubber is also disintegrating on the front and also on the sides. And I can see the rubber here is starting to peel off from the plastic cover here. I'm not sure if it's due to the way I'm using the camera, but when I look at secondhand units on eBay and also from other marketplaces, I see the same problem with the disintegrating rubber grip. And this one here has a cover here that's chipped off. The top looks okay and the back still looks okay. There is some wear and tear with the rubber here. The texture is no longer there. The display is now down because uh, it broke down last week. So the touch screen can no longer be used and also the display LCD is down. The viewfinder is actually still working. So I can still use this camera to take photos. It's just that without the display, I cannot use this to make or record videos. And I will definitely have to get this repaired or replaced. And there is something wrong internally because when I power on or power off, it starts up and shuts down really slow. And when I switch from photo to video mode, the switch is very slow. On the side here, you can see the rubber cover for the mic input is gone. And this is still the same type of rubber that I use with the GH4. So this is probably going to disintegrate in the future as well. Panasonic should just use those hard plastic, this type of hard plastic for all the covers. When I use the GH5 outdoors, I'm usually recording vlogs. So those video footages are handheld recorded footages. And if I record myself, I would just hold the camera like this. 
The in-body image stabilization of the GH5 is so good that you don't actually need a gimbal. And because you don't need the gimbal, you have a lot of weight savings. And remember, you have to put a mic on top as well. So if I do need to use a gimbal, which I don't need, I usually just use this very dumb uh, selfie stick. Just attach this to the camera so that I can put so that I can have the camera further away so that I can get a wider view. Because with a 12mm lens, I'm getting a 24mm focal length. Sometimes it's just not wide enough. So sometimes I do need to use this dumb selfie stick. And this is a really lightweight selfie stick compared to having an actual gimbal. So one of the main selling points of Micro Four Thirds for the GH5 and the GH6 is the in-body image stabilization is really so good. The other big selling point is the total weight of the camera together with the Micro Four Third lens is usually much lighter, significantly lighter compared to APS-C or full-frame cameras and lenses. So if you want to find a camera together with a lens of certain focal length or speed, usually the Micro Four Thirds camera and lens will be lighter. And over the years, I have been tempted to switch over to full frame and APS-C cameras. But when I look at the weight of the camera and the lens, um, I just stick to Micro Four Thirds. Because if you take a look at this setup, this setup is about 1 kg. And if I were to switch to APS-C and full frame for a similar setup, it's going to be much heavier and sometimes much bigger than this. So this is actually quite portable and still comfortable enough for me to hold in one hand like this. Now you have to remember that when you are recording videos, usually you are going to be holding the camera up like this for long periods of time. So any weight savings is really appreciated. And that's the selling point of Micro Four Thirds cameras. The main downside of Micro Four Thirds system is subject isolation. More specifically, the amount of background blur or bokeh you can get. So if you want to get significant background blur, if you want your subject to really pop out in front of the background, you will have to use a lens that is at least f2.8 or faster. f2 or faster is the best. This is pretty good. This is a 12mm f2 lens, but this is a fixed lens, which is not that versatile when it comes to vlogging outdoors. There are Panasonic lens that are f1.7 and they are zoom lenses but those are quite heavy so i've been tempted to buy those lenses for the longest time but when i calculate how heavy they are together with the camera i just um, go back to using my variable zoom lenses such as this one the panasonic 8 to 18 millimeter f 2.8 to f 4 the weight of this lens is around 300 grams. So together with the camera, this is around one kg. And when you add the shotgun mic above, the total weight is going to be less than 1.2 or 1.1 kg. If I need longer reach, I may use this Panasonic Leica 12 to 60 f 2.8 to f 4 lens. And again, the total weight is going to be less than 1.2 or 1.1 kg. There is another lens, the Panasonic Leica 12 to 35 mm f2.8 fixed variable. That setup is also going to be less than 1.2 or 1.1 kg. So um, these are very portable, way more portable compared to APS-C or full frame camera and lens combination. The third selling point of Panasonic GH series cameras for me is EX teleconversion. And I do not see many reviews talk about how useful this feature is in the real world. Let me explain. Let's say I have an ultra wide lens on the GH5. So this is eight to 18 millimeter, which will give me 16 to 36 millimeter focal length. With EX teleconversion, when you're recording videos at 4K UHD, you can get an extra 1.4X crop. 
So effectively, you can get 16 millimeter to 50.4 millimeter focal length with this lens. And if you are recording with full HD 1080p, the crop is 2.6x with EX teleconversion. And with this ultra wide lens, you can get 16 millimeter to 97 millimeter focal length. So you can get almost a telephoto, mid telephoto range with an ultra wide lens. Not many camera systems out there can give you this. With the Panasonic GH6, you can now record videos at even higher resolution. You can record videos at 5.7K, which will give you 17.3 million pixels per frame effectively. And this is almost two times the number of pixels you can get with 4K UHD recording, which is 8.3 million pixels. So together with EX teleconversion, which is actually called pixel to pixel in the GH6, you get that crop, which I'm not sure how much it is with the GH6. Additionally, you can also crop into the video due to the high resolution when you are editing the video in post. So you get the camera crop and you get the video resolution crop and you can record videos with no loss in video quality. So with EX teleconversion or the pixel by pixel feature, you can actually use an ultra wide angle zoom lens, just one lens for event coverage. And recently I had to use this camera and lens for event coverage at the Urban Sketches Symposium in Auckland. And I had to switch from the camera to using the iPhone for the 3X telephoto zoom because I was recording with 4K and the maximum focal length I could get was 50 millimeter, which was not good enough. So I had to rely on the iPhone. But if I have the GH6, I can actually just um, get all the extra crop from the EX teleconversion and the resolution. I don't even need to switch from camera to iPhone, iPhone back to camera. All right, to conclude, I think Panasonic cameras have questionable build quality the downsides or limitations of micro four thirds are subject isolation, the amount of background blur that you can get, and maybe high ISO performance. Actually, you can use the camera up to ISO 600 and the uh, video is still usable. The main selling points for me, for micro four thirds, the main selling points that keep me coming back to this system that prevents me from switching to other systems are the incredible IBIS performance that is almost gimbal-like, the weight savings and the EX teleconversion software feature that can turn one lens into two lenses.